I know this isn't a very original topic, and I know for certain I'm not the first or the last to make this video, but I hope I can at least bring a different viewpoint. As per usual with these scenarios, it won't be the entirety of either faction thrown through the wacky wormhole of wonder, and this way we can avoid a lot of complaints. For how the Covenant from Halo end up in 40k, it's going to be the Fleet of Sacred Consecration this time. I'm going to start by giving a little bit of background lore for those unfamiliar with this fleet in particular. Um, during the events of Halo 2, it's revealed that the Prophet of Regret accidentally quote unquote stumbled upon Earth, the homeworld of humanity, in the 2550s. We know that the fleet Regret brought with him was surprisingly small, and it's even remarked by UNSC Upper Brass that the fleet that destroyed Reach was 50 times the size of the Fleet of Sacred Consecration. It was Lord Hood if I remember correctly. This fleet was small, but consider that almost the entire Covenant Armada was used on Reach, and that during Operation First Strike, it was revealed that one prophet, which turned out to be the Prophet of Truth, had known of humanity's homeworld and had begun amassing an armada comparable to Reach's destruction. Only thanks to Operation First Strike was the UNSC able to delay the full Covenant invasion of Earth, but this may have played into the Prophet of Truth's hands. We know that the Prophet of Truth between Halo CE and Halo 3 was trying to centralize power all around himself within High Charity, while at the same time the quote-unquote lesser prophets were vying for power in their own twisted ways. We know from references in Halo 2 Anniversary that the Prophet of Regret set out to Earth because the Prophet found a Forerunner map that showed the portal to one of the Halo rings being on Earth. Regret, in an attempt to claim all the glory for himself, set out towards the Forerunner artifact with nothing but a small flotilla. 13 cruisers, 2 CAS class assault carriers, and a cat pattern battle cruiser are what will be used for the majority of this scenario. One of those CAS class assault carriers was the flagship of the Fleet of Sacred Consecration, and that is what Regret was on, and that's also the one that just went straight for Earth. I know I'm gonna get comments saying that I'm gimping the Covenant once again, but remember that if too much of the Covenant's naval capacity appeared in 40k space, it would very quickly gain the attention of a galactic superpower. By giving a smaller fleet entry, we can allow for a more organic consolidation of power and a slower burn for the scenarios. It allows for a more narrative driven focus as opposed to a just fleet battle focus. As per usual, scenario 1 will be the scenario with the least substance, ending with the scenario where I just go full fanfiction. So 2 minutes 40 seconds in and we finally get to the meat and potatoes of the video. Scenario 1, the fleet of sacred consecration appears relatively close to earth, we'll just say it's either in between Venus and earth or Mars and earth. Uh, Nearly identical to how it played out during the first mission of Halo 2 actually, the fleet just pops into space very close to Earth. This fleet would be wiped out damn near immediately. As long as Battlefleet Solar is within the sector, I can imagine very heavy losses for the Imperium, but nothing short of a fleet comparable to the one that destroyed Reach could hope to even touch Holy Terra. The orbital infrastructure alone above Terra is described as a cloud miles thick. In Halo 2, we get to see a few hundred defense platforms scattered around, but nothing on the level of 40k. Well again, I do see the Imperium taking some losses, could be pretty high losses, but they would ultimately win without having to use excessive means. They wouldn't need to open the Noctis Labyrinth or anything like that. Realistically, at the most, one battle fleet would be completely destroyed. All in all, decisive Imperium victory. Scenario 2, um, the fleet of Sacred Consecration pops up somewhere in fringe space. This scenario allows for what I believe to be the most organic of the situations, as we would get a really nice story of the Prophet of Regret coming to terms with the fact that not only is he alone, but there is no way for him to get home. Regret would be separated from his home, his people, his industrial base, his support, and his gods, because the Forerunners don't exist in this universe. Yeah, there's a lot of really advanced tech from the Dark Age of Technology, but the Forerunners as they know them just don't exist. The Halos don't exist, the Arcs don't exist. This would bring up a narrative theme that 40k already loves. The religious zealotry and fervor of the Halo galaxy would be turned up to 11. Regret, being an arrogant shit, isn't an idiot. Very quickly he would realize that all he had to unify his people is faith. I don't personally believe Regret is strong enough of a leader to fully galvanize the Covenant to the degree that Truth does, but he managed to work his way up to the top three spots within the Covenant, so he has to be a fairly competent orator. Given the benefit of the doubt, the Covenant would set up shop in a nearby star system, slowly building up industry and population. 
I could very easily see the grunts becoming the main weapon in the arsenal of Regret's Covenant during the early years of his arrival, that, or if they landed in a spot where their agriculture couldn't keep up, I can see them being turned into a livestock species. As sad as it is, in this scenario, it makes the most sense for Regret to essentially turn the grunts into a food source. With food production out of the way, I can very easily see the Covenant shifting from a traditional ground force into strike teams or clandestine operations, similar to Halo Reach. In Reach, we got to see both the UNSC and the Covenant, with Noble Team and the Zealot Headhunter Squad, respectively. In the following scenarios, with the material disadvantage that they would start with, the Jackals would return to their roots of piracy, or be broken down into sniper squads like we saw in Halo 2 and 3. Brutes would just beat people up, not much to say except them hitting stuff. They can even vie for power, just like every other faction in 40k, and I'm going to be breaking down how the rest of this goes in two sub-scenarios. So, 2A is technically two different scenarios, but they end up almost exactly the same, and this is the Covenant end up in either Tyranid controlled space or in Necron space. Tyranids get more biomass, and I really just can't see a situation where a small fleet could succeed on a large scale against the Tyranids or the Necrons. Yeah, the fleet almost certainly could outrun the Tyranids, but that's not really a victory for anyone. The battle is just over. The Covenants fled. And for the Nids, an on-paper victory doesn't count, because they don't use paper. Scenario 2B, the Covenant end up just to the north of the Calixis Sector. Given how underdeveloped this part of Imperial space is, the Covenant might be able to steal a solar system or two as long as they don't get too greedy. I wanted to break this down into two more sub-segments, but it's just not worth it. If Regret actually uses his head, and for this scenario, he will be, then he will just slowly steal a ship or two or a planet or two on the fringes, so long as they don't catch the eyes of the Inquisition within the first five years, they will actually be able to set up shop and have a bastion comparable to Advex Moors, which was held by the Rangda up until the end of the first Xenocides. I'm not plugging my own videos or anything. They would be targeting a very backwater or poor region of Imperial space, so I don't see the Imperium giving them a ton of attention before the situation gets well out of hand. However, as soon as the Mechanicum gets a piece of that shielding technology or how their plasma weapons work, you best believe the full might of the Mechanicum is going to swing its way north. Without a doubt, this would turn into a power struggle between the Inquisition, specifically the Ordo Xenos, and the Adeptus Mechanicus, since after such a leap in technology was secured by whatever faction held it, they would become the dominant power amongst the High Lords of Terras. And for Gits and Shiggles, we're going to say that Mechanicus gets the technology, and they start a civil war. Thankfully now, Lionel Johnson is back in the setting, so we could see some serious weaponry be released from the deep vaults of the, the Rock. The Lion is the only Primarch with the tools necessary to handle the Mechanicus civil war that will come from this. I'm going to end it here with the Covenant are similar to the Tau, where they exist and they're doing their own thing, but they aren't unstoppable. The Mechanicus becomes the dominant faction within the Imperium, and within five years of the Mechanicum being in power, Big E is going to be set up with a text-to-speech rig, and the Imperium will implode. 2C. I'll be honest with this one, I wasn't sure how to start it, but I've decided that they are just going to land somewhere near Arthas Moloch. It was previously hit by the Tyranid, so it's pretty barren. This would actually be one of the worst possible outcomes for the Covenant, or more specifically the Prophet of Regret, since the Tau would immediately recognize the incursion by an extremely advanced empire, and a vast majority of their forces would focus on the fleet of Sacred Consecration. The Jackal Pirate raids would not be nearly as effective as they would be against the backwater of the Imperium, and as well, the response time for a serious fleet action would be significantly less. The Imperium is damn effective, but they have such large cogs in their bureaucratic machines as compared to the relatively small Tau Empire. Very quickly, running fleet battles occur, and the Tau would actually be able to comprehend a lot more of the Forerunner tech than the Covenants themselves do. If the Tau were able to reverse engineer even just the Cat Pattern Battlecruiser and implement its shielding and propulsion, they would immediately be a major issue for the setting. This might also be the reality check that the Tau needs that the Galaxy really does not care about them and doesn't care how new they are to this whole empire building thing. Everybody needs to eat, and everybody is trying to climb the same billion year old corpse pile. For the sake of the narrative of this situation, this is the wake up call that the town need, and they would start planning a serious thrust into either Eldari or Imperial space. If they play it smart, they would avoid the Imperium initially until they had the production capacity to produce battlecruisers and the various classes of carriers on a mass scale. 
This also works since this still wouldn't mean the Tau have access to the warp. They would just have access to some absolutely amazing shielding, weaponry, and propulsion. I don't want to even get into jump drives or slip space since they're two different universe with very different laws that govern their travel. I don't think that the Tau would be able to travel the warp with the shielding of the Forerunners, despite how great it is, given that the warp is just a dimension where reality does not exist. They would still need to implement some sort of Geller field, which is why I suggest the Eldari as their target here, since they could slowly uncover the secrets of the webway and circumvent the need for warp travel altogether. I really can't see a race of the Covenant not being integrated into the Tau Empire. Each one fits a niche so well, it, well, except the Brutes. You wouldn't even need to brainwash the elites, just tell them honorable combat is that way. Grunts are some nice beach softeners, jackals are nice marksmen and privateers, Sand Shayun if you tweak their genetics, or just call the old ones you can get some nice warriors and mold them to the Tau way. Let Golo Worms and Engineers go where the technology go, and Brutes and Drones would be genetically modified or influenced by the Ethereals, or just called outright. Simple as that, Tau get a huge tech boost, moving on. 2D, the Fleet of Sacred Consecration ends up somewhere within or just outside the Eye of Terror. I'll just say this out the gate since I'm probably going to get lost in the sauce with this one. Chaos wins 40k if this happens. Vashtor having access to Forerunner tech and actually being able to fully understand that shit would be an instant game over for the setting. If Vashtor doesn't get his hands on it, then I can see the entirety of the fleet falling to the main gods. Grunts are essentially Nurglings or Blue Terrors anyway, Elites would definitely listen to the battle deity leading them towards honorable combat, Brutes, another side of corn, which is just blood and skulls, and then you've got Slanesh and Zinch would go and get the Jackals or the San Shayun. That one is a toss-up since they both swing either way, but both want an edge over their rivals, both want to be super rich, both want to be decadent, it could go either way. Up next are the Engineers, which I made the mistake of calling Hormagons the last time I talked about them, but let me assure you, it is pronounced Hurricock and the Let Golo or the Hunters. Both would be a fun corruption, and I can't even begin to theorycraft. The Hunters, if they were in their soulbound forms, which is how we fight them in the Halo games, or inside the Scarabs, could maybe possibly through a bit of stretching fall to corn. I don't know what else aside from Zinch, which I think is the only option for both species. Then again, I don't know if the engineers could be corrupted since they're just like horny for broken machines. Which, now that I word it like that, Slanesh does actually come to mind. So yeah, all of them could fall. Slanesh could just be all, oh, I'm a broken machine and I need a big strong ball with gangly appendages to come fondle my weak bits and the let go low worms and the engineers would just fall. The drones, eh, they're probably going to corn. I wasn't even sure where to put them because I don't even know if they would have a soul. 2E, the fleet pops out near Trezin's domain of the Solemnus galleries. We would get to see an entire Covenant fleet get pokeballed and put into an exhibit. It would make for a really cute little crossover if someone attacks Trezin's museum and he just pops out the closest pokeball which happens to be the Covenant Fleet of Sacred Consecration, it would be an effective strategy, not on the level of the Emperor of Man and the Noctis Labyrinth, but still pretty effective nonetheless. I doubt he would use them though, since that would be a one-of-a-kind specimen. And lastly, we get the most fun. The Fleet of Sacred Consecration ends up just outside of the Galactic Core, and there they encounter the Leagues of Votan. This is just the advantage that the Votan need, Granted, it may take a solid percentage of their population to actually put down the Covenant threat, the technological gain from doing so would be insane. Also, I can see at least the elites being given a fair shot at joining since they are extremely honorable as a rule. I know there are exceptions in Sangheili lore, but those are the exceptions, not the rule. Prophets wouldn't really fit in since they like to value their super long lives a little bit much. Engineers and Legolos would be a seamless fit, and we could get some nice Rule 34 fanfic of a Halo Engineer fixing a broken Votan or an Ironkin that's just so submissive and damaged. They would actually be the main gain from this situation. The Engineers and the Hunters would buff the Votan to a point where they would be damn near unstoppable, as a Votan actually sustaining damage could so easily be fixed by some worm or engineers. Also, the genetic diversity brought to them by the Covenant would allow for their gene banks to get some nice new alien juice. 
Jackals and Brutes I don't see fitting in too well, maybe a few could escape and become privateers, but again, not really a lot they could do on their own. It would make for a really nice Xeno race, but we have the Grunts and the Drones. I can sadly see some pirate fleets of Sanghili or Jackals taking the Grunts for food, or foot soldiers and the drones for the same purpose, but I don't see them serving much else of a purpose to the Votan. Since the leagues already have STCs, they wouldn't really need to farm the grunts for food, they can just shove random shit in and get the equivalent of a nutrient block. Can you imagine the dwarves pulling up on a scarab or a dozen ghosts coming over the hill? That brings back the full 80s goofy vibe that I really miss in Warhammer, and this could absolutely bring that back. So to sum everything up in order of scenarios, instant death to the Segmentum Solar Defenses, or any real core system for that matter, uh, instant death to the Nids, instant death to the Necrons, uh, prolonged stalemate until a major crusade comes along, or the Mechanicus or Inquisition decides to swing their attention towards it, then they become the dominant faction within the Imperium, then we have Tau get a super buff to their technology, some new Xeno races, followed by demons just get food, Trizin gets a new Pokemon, and Votan get a massive buff, and maybe some new clone buddies or just new alien juice. Uh, part 2 will be a much larger fleet, and that'll come out if... Uh, after we hit 1k subs.